the crew worldwide from Kali to Twitter. Real hardcore fans, boxing ass niggas, consistency cops, police the views. We'll pull up receipts for any debates you choose. Shout outs to Clan Archie for the dope production. Ring gang stay with the best discussions. Yeah. Ring gang radio. So now brings us to now the fight of the evening, the main event. <sighs> man, let me tell you something. I thought it was gonna be hard, man. This is hard. Uh, all I know is my Nigerian peoples, man. Like I know my my cousin, my cousin Namdi. We were because we were talking during this fight, and we were talking. We were saying, "What the fuck is wrong with him? Like, yo, what is this? Like, you know, like my peoples were not, you know, like, like on my Facebook or whatever. They was not happy, you know. It was just like, why, you know, what happened? What the fuck is going on? Now, in the in our recap on this card, I mean, we I mean, we touched we, we talked about Ruiz. I mean, uh, myself, I mean. Like I said, Ruiz has skills. I always said that. I mean, Ruiz has skills out the ass. The one thing that I that he's always disappointed me about was his conditioning. You know, because I saw this and I saw because his conditioning was a factor in his lone loss against Joseph Parker. His conditioning, like I mean, I'm from the old school. It's like I have very old school leanings about boxing. I feel like you have to be optimal physically in order to get the max of your skills. I, and that's how I feel. I mean. I was saying, I mean, you're, you're, still, you're still right. You're still right. Because if you're not optimal, you're taking a gamble on the other guy not being optimal. Right. Right. And it's not, it, so it's not, I mean, I understand that there, there, there are big people that carry their weight well and that can fight optimal. And, and there, there, are, there are examples, there are plenty of examples like that. But I'm, my mind state, because just in the gyms I've been to where I've been trained, like, you have like physical, like in order for you to do what you need to do. But boxing is a sport of endurance. You got to put in the work of training. Like it's not just throwing punches and shit and just doing drills over and over again. You got to build your body to do it. You know, what I'm saying. And yeah, I know LB, you've done it and I've done it. And it's just like you you see what happens when your body is in the type of shape it needs to be to actually do it. Like you feel, you feel, you feel powerful, and that's and that's and that that's why my mentality on that will never change. And this is why, and this is why, when I see someone like Andy Ruiz Jr., I see all that talent with that. I just feel like he was going to turn into Chris Ariola, and then we mentioned that. But LB, you did mention too that we may get a better fight um, with you know yeah. with him replacing Big Baby Miller. We got a quote unquote better fight. We got an upset. <laughs> We got a motherfucking upset. Big Major upset. upset. Major upset. Boxing. Now uh, it's shaking to a major upset. You know, so um and and my my thoughts on the fight personally, I mean personally I do I mean Joshua may have not taken really seriously. That's my my opinion. And I think he might have been lacking, he might have lacked in his training a little bit. Well, I mean, well, he's 247, but I, I think probably in his preparation, whatever game plan that he had, he probably lacked in. Is I, I don't think he trained as hard as he could, and it's, and I, I think his mind was not where it needed to be. And Ruiz, and you know, and then Ruiz was staring everything under the sun, like you know, like you know, motherfuckers were in, you know, fat bastard, this fat bastard, that. Like Ruiz was just like, you know, he was his whole demeanor was like he was just happy to be here. He was just happy to be in the moment. He didn't have no pressure. No, he had not. Niggas weren't expecting him to win. He was already in shape. He, you know, he was sharp from the last fight. So yeah. this is probably the best Ruiz you're going to, going to get in this situation, other than a rematch when he didn't got the bag and he got bigger resources to do shit. Right. And, and, and just to highlight something too, that he, as you mentioned, like that, he had just fought like last month, so he was still in his fighting condition. And then let me do, to highlight too, and also um, I think on the colleague, you know, you uh, um, a post, I think the flies also mentioned to reiterate this: young fighters should be active, active, at least you know active. And I think what really helped Ruiz, even though he was probably heavier, he gained weight after that fight, 
was the fact that he was active. He was still in fight mode. Like he didn't allow his body to, you know, to rest per se. You know, like he was still going. And and then I was and I was already not a fan of Joshua having these type of breaks. Like the last time he fought was in September against Ovechkin. Like he should, he, he, he should, which was a hard fight. <laughs> it, was, it wasn't, but he should have had a fight since then. He should have had a fight in between. He could have fought in March, to be honest. He needed right. another fight back in March, end of February, something like. Yeah, we talk about it all the time. These niggas with these fucking twice a year. These niggas are literally going to work twice a year, basically. Right. Yeah, they, they make yeah, too yeah. much fucking money, man. Niggas ain't hungry, dog. Yeah, and, and it wasn't like if Joshua was for, for a minute, even when he, even when he first started collecting the belts, he was fighting three times a year, and it was and, and you can see like he was progressing. You know, what I'm saying yeah, he was fucking, he was getting dudes out of there, hurting and fucking them up. But then after that, you know, you know, after the Klitschko fight, you know, his star was on the rise, and you know, and then you got what you get. You know, he, he got complacent. You know, he made too much money. You know, and. Uh, you know, you get, you know, you get the Parker performance, you get the, you know, to, uh, to come, especially the to come before, you know, it's how come he was 254, he had no business being that goddamn high. None whatsoever. It, man, so, like, I do believe be, his, his, him not being in proper shape, you know, the ring rust has something to do with it. But, yeah, I, I do too. You know, he also fought the wrong fight, like, yeah, well, I know this the uh, the eye test. You know, shout out to uh, my nigga PJ. Mm. But you know, we, we gotta bring it down a little bit. You know, like Joshua, it's like he was he had a little Danny Jacobs in him last night, man. Like he was just refusing to fucking fight big. I don't know what was it like, like fighting big should. Should, it, should, should just come natural if you're a big guy. Yeah. Like, like, just like in basketball, just posting up should just come natural. You should want to just be like, get the fuck out my way and, you know, lay it up. <laughs> but, you know, over the years, you, you know, motherfuckers just started coming up with, you know, saying, you know, fuck it. I don't care if I'm as, you know, as tall as the fucking street pole, the light pole out here. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a, you know, let me do my teeth back. You know, let me dribble out here. You know, let me do my shaking big. All right, nigga, I'm going to shoot a three. Fuck it. <laughs> oh, it went in. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm good. Yeah, yeah. Pass it, pass it back here. And, and <laughs> niggas started getting that mentality where, fuck it. You, you want to do something that's unnatural. Mm-hmm. Instead of saying, okay, let me master the natural thing. And then let me transition into other shit that's unnatural and make that natural too. Meaning he was a fish that excelled, that tried to excel at swimming first before he said, yo, let me evolve and become an amphibian and see if I can be on land as well. God damn, that's, that's, that's an elaborate ass analogy, bro. <laughs> but it's deep, nigga, it's deep though. And, and if, you, if you have a master fighting big, why the fuck you gonna try to fight small against a guy who knows how to fight small? Yeah, and and then one thing I, I want to mention about that too is I, I, I'm a big dude myself, you know, it's a um, six three and a half, two hundred and thirty three pounds, maybe even a little bit more because I had I had I had turkey bacon this morning, um, and I know I know for us I know one of like we all have the certain body type if you spar or you know the certain type of people with a certain type of build that will give you trouble mines are cats who are shorter than me who are stocky and got no type of neck like but they they stocky to build like those 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 i'm not talking about super small like midget size but i'm talking about you know you know a little bit like at least five inches small but they stocky because they have a low center, they have a low center of gravity. Because remember, Ruiz Jr. ain't no little dude. He's 6'2". No. Right. 6'2", you know, the big dude, the, to me, shit. But Joshua's a bigger dude, so I'm just using that, like, those type yeah, of... No, dudes, no, I, I agree. You're you right. Yeah, you know, but those type of dudes they used to give me help because, A, I'd have to punch down, and then, two, like, the certain gravity, so it's, it's, it's hard to knock them down. 
And, you know, and two, it's hard to hurt them if, they're, if their traps in their neck are really developed. So and there was one cat that used to drive me absolutely crazy because I used to, he used to literally have me running for my damn life, you know, <laughs> because... I'd love to see that. <laughs> because he used to put so much pressure on me, you know, and, and I mean, he, his leg was, uh, he, one leg was longer than the other, so that's part of the reason why he, he moved in one direction. He couldn't cut off the ring on me. But he put enough pressure on me where I know if I even stayed in his range, he would clock me. And he hit hard, hard. Not the hardest I was ever hit, but hard enough to know where, you know, I know I've taken a body shot. I've taken, you know, a couple shots upstairs to know that, you know, I didn't want to do, I didn't want to take that many shots from him. So, and this is, and this is how, and then watching how that fight played out between Ruiz and Joshua reminded me of that. Because it was like, Joshua didn't respect his power, Ruiz's power, and didn't use it. You didn't fight big, as you said. Didn't you didn't utilize his reach? You know, and he tried. Like, I mean, he, for he had brief success because he got in and he landed two left hooks to left. You know, that dropped him. That's the first time Ruiz ever went down. And you're like, okay, you know, and everyone's like, you know, I'm like, okay, you know, this is how this fight is gonna go. And Ruiz was still stunned. But what happened was yeah, he was he was definitely hurt by that shit. Oh yeah, he was definitely hurt. But instead of Joshua didn't let the knockout come to him. He didn't set it up. He he waited in. He didn't respect his power. He didn't keep his hands up. And in doing so, Ruiz was able to set a trap for him and then basically landed a left hook to his temple, two of them, that pretty much had him doing a little dance. Put him on Queer Street. And then So basically Joshua turned into Wilder and got hurt exactly and he and he never recovered he did not recover from that fight i mean he recovered from that he went down twice because he went down that and he went down near the end of the third round too near the ropes and then after that the fight was was tense like you know it, it was it was chess match tense because now joshua was down so like they were boxing you know i think every now and then joshua would land something and so would and Ruiz was good, would find his way inside and pounded the body. This is something that most fighters were not doing with Joshua, attacking his body. They did not do that. I don't, I don't think no none of the, none of the fighters were, were even attempting to do it. Tekem and, did a few you know body shots, but no one did it on a like a real consistent level. Basic, like, you know what I mean, until Ruiz did it, and I think yeah. I think that. Also, too, to help to sap Joshua's stamina, and and then the seventh round, he exploded again. He was down twice. Uh, the third time that he went down, he was you know he was kind of weird. Like, I, it, it's, it's, I know the reference probably giving him the benefit of the doubt because Joshua was just really on some lack shit in the corner, which was pissing me off. And then the fourth I think it turned time, Hollywood. He he knocked up Hollywood. <laughs> like you in New York, bro. <laughs> and then the fourth time, he was just in the corner, like you know, he was answering the questions and shit like that. But I think the referee was like, "Yeah, this dude's concussed. Stopped it." Nigga, all comfortable on the ropes, bro. You see that shit? Like you, you would have thought a bitch was supposed to serve him a drink from right there, right? Like you know, like the coconut you, or something. Like when you get knocked down. You're supposed to show the referee that you're able to continue the fight. Yeah, body language. Yeah, your body language was telling me, was telling niggas like he was in his corner because I, I think you know, the corner uh, he was probably was like, "Okay, hey, we gotta pull me out" because I think he wanted his corner to pull him out of the fight, you know. But this way he was just chilling. It was like, all right, and it was just like, because there was there was like a minute and yes. he was trying to get that damn. Um... That that Wilder love that he got in the Ortiz fight with that long ass. <laughs> yeah, I remember when he got hurt that that little break they had? So it's like, nah, bro. Like, you gotta remember, like, you just coming over here to America, nigga. Like, chill, <laughs> chill. Like, yeah, but then you, after you that, ain't pay your you ain't pay your wobble dues in America, <laughs> like, cause. You remember he started the fight and his 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 energy bar was already like in the orange yellow like that shit wasn't green. Yeah, I think too that he had, he felt pressure. I also, because you know because you know how this, these fights come over 
here fighting America. I think he felt some pressure. I think that was another thing too, because you could tell when motherfuckers is like pressure intense, like their fight, their their mind is too into the fight. They're probably overthinking a lot of shit, and they have, he was under a lot of pressure. And that I can also see too, because I mean he he didn't. And look then like, he got a psychologist too, bro. Like what the fuck was going on? You undefeated. You the dude. What you need a psychologist for? Yeah, no, but um, unfortunately, that, I mean, a lot of professional athletes, they do use it, but unfortunately, you know, referee stopped it. Referee didn't like the body language, stopped it. And then you, 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 you know, I mean, Joy is watching a 200, almost 270 pound Mexican, a Mexican man jump up and down like he loved the damn water. In this case, he did, you know. <laughs> So now Andy Ruiz Jr. is the new WBA, WBO, and IBF heavyweight champion of the world, and probably the de facto number one heavyweight in the eyes of men. <clears throat> you know. Yeah, he is. He is in my book. He, he got three belts, and he won conclusively. You know, no, no, no bullshit decision, no controversy, none of that. He, he beat somebody that he was favored to lose. Yeah, when he, he was the what, twenty-five to one underdog. 25, 15, 15 to twenty-five to one underdog. I'm like, yeah, like, dude, like, he, he got no respect, and he won clear and clean. Like, and he should have never been that low. To me, those odds were better, better suited for the Miller fight. And and the reason why Miller was a big question mark. And I think the reason why is too in Ruiz. I mean, I think as I mentioned before, the with Ruiz, what people people were not because people didn't the like, Ruiz did not really have any real mainstream fights. I mean, like, he was I mean he was on Pacquiao cards, and then also I mean he was on the PBC card. But you know unless you watch unless you actually watch the sport and you know and you actually watch PBC cards and you don't do it on some fanboy PBC fanboy shit, you want to know that, like you will see him there. He was there in his last, just a month ago on the PBC card. So I think that I think that's where the the odds were based on. He wasn't on American television, and like unless you watched any of those other fights on Top Rank or whatever, you're like, oh, you know, he's a, he's a fat he's a fat Mexican fighter, which he's not. Like, I mean, I mean, well, odds, yeah, the, he, he the is. Odds makers gotta know better than that, bro. The odds makers, man. It's like we we you know we already know like this heavyweight, the, the three kings were already looking funny in the life. Hmm. I mean, and, and this goes back into the whole milking fights shit that, you know, we talk about. You know, all these super fights, y'all niggas want to fucking try to get one-offs for, you know, winner take all, you know, super mega dollars. Because y'all, y'all think y'all too good to take 40 mil or 50 mil and say, you know what? I got a whole career ahead of me shit. If I start making 40 mil, 50 mil now, it's only going to increase if I keep winning. So shit, let me take this 50 mil. Nah, y'all niggas is like, you know what, let's fuck around and you know, you know, let's do this, let's do that, let's talk up this, let's fight this dangerous guy, let's fight this person, let this dude get my easy word, let this dude get my easy word. Mm, yeah, da, da. All this bullshit, and it's like, once again, it's like y'all fucked up the bag. Y'all fucked up the bag. And now somebody else walks into boxing history. Cause he sees the moment. Yeah. And, and shout out to fucking Andy Ruiz Jr. for that shit. Cause we we needed shit to be shaken up. Cause cause Joshua getting complacent, fighting twice a year. <laughs> Water, see- Water taking unnecessary rematches. Fury oh, fighting. Oh Lord, yes. Yeah, Fury Fury fighting. Who the fuck knows? You know, it's just right. like. We needed this shake up. Like this this shit is like shit was getting stagnant, bro. Like it it was getting more unsteady than used to Joshua's jab last night. <laughs> because this shit this dude was literally fighting like a big ass fucking Danny Jacobs at heavyweight. Like bro what he didn't wanna jab him, wanna move forward. You don't want to keep his hands up. Like he was, he was just looking like, okay, I'm gonna get this dude out of here. I'm big and I'm powerful. I'm gonna get this nigga out of here. And he didn't have a plan B. He didn't adjust. That was the only thing. He did not adjust. 
you know, you would think that you know, after getting rocked by the time shots he was getting, he would try to move his head or move around the ring to clear his head a little bit. He didn't do anything. We seen him adjust in his last fight. We we seen him adjust in his last fight. That's the exactly. fucking part about it. He most certainly did. It was a big adjustment. Like literally get beat up for three rounds, make an adjustment, dominate the next three rounds, and get a guy out of there. Mm-hmm. And in this fight, it's with a less heralded opponent. <clears throat> and no adjustments, no fire. You know, he even seemed too fucking happy to lose at the end. Like, yeah. you know, compare that to someone like Person who, who put her fucking heart, soul, spirit her fucking country but Belgium on the line in that fight mm-hmm. and when she fucking lost and then Joshua would act like he lost like 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 maybe a quarter fell out his pocket and went down a drain like that's how that nigga was he I see niggas get more mad losing that fucking 2k yes <laughs> Like, and this nigga's like, yeah, I mean, yeah, be sports, good sportsmanship. Yeah, 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 cool, you know, respect, but come on, family. Like, and the whole giving Ruiz the belts before the fucking fight. Yeah, <laughs> let them hold it shit at the press conference. Yo, this shit just, just seemed weird. This is like the Lamont Brewster fight for Vladimir for uh, Joshua's career right now. Right. And actually, this one was worse because at least at least Vladimir was beating the shit out of Brewster. Like he was putting hands on him, and you know he he couldn't he gassed out. He really gassed out because people talking about this is fucking fucking. Let me go in. You talk about the call your heavyweight. You can see how it's diminished the way these niggas gas out in these fucking fights, like. Ortiz gassing out with Wilder after having pedestrian ass rounds and a little flurry and you can't even finish niggas off. Joshua, niggas saying he gassed out after trying to, to finish Ruiz after the knockdown. Like, nigga, you weren't going balls to the wall. Like, you weren't throwing 90 punches, motherfucker. Like, nigga, this was a pedestrian ass round. So, you know, y'all gassing out off a of that little bit of fucking effort compared to Vladimir throwing everything but the kitchen sink at fucking Brewster and falling apart after like what five six rounds? It was five rounds, yeah. Yeah, so I mean, <laughs> dude, dude went hard trying to kill somebody out there, get him out of there, and he gasses out. That's a that just show you the quality because you get you, somebody's gassing out after four or five rounds of going hard. But these people, they can't even gas out. They gas out after going one or two rounds or expending 40 seconds of punching. Mm. Like, like w- w- what are y'all doing in training? Like, y- y'all supposed to be world-class, like, and, and, and y'all not even fighting enough. To, to, it's like, how can we even, y'all even be great? <laughs> Reach the level of greatness from previous eras when y'all, y'all can't even get past this stage like y'all not even fighting enough to, to even give the hopper give yourself more opportunities bro like this shit right. is it's just crazy bro i don't even know what to say sometimes yeah no i feel you man I, I absolutely feel you it's just like yeah the conditioning part i mean i if you ever hear me talk about conditioning before i, I always think like fighters today not just the headways, you know, themselves, but I think other divisions too. I, I think that there's a lot of cutting corners or some something that's not being done correctly in their training uh, regarding it. And it's just, it's weird when you see people with stamina, you know, like of course Canelo is one of the best examples. You know, someone who's young and in their prime, but can't, can't go hard rounds in their actual prime without huffing and puffing. You know, it's just weird. And then Joshua, in this case, and with Joshua, I remember one of my fears with Joshua, and I said this over and over again, was him going into Frank Bruno territory, as in you know getting you know getting the body getting the bodybuilder physique, which is just as which is just as you know which is just as bad as coming in you know fleshy, you know, because a bodybuilding physique doesn't do anything for you with boxing. It really doesn't. It, you know, it's 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 basically your order. You just look good in trunks, 
depending on who you actually who you care to impress. But it does little for you boxing wise too. And I think in although two forty seven is not the heaviest Joshua's been, he's most or less been around there. I think it's now time for him to actually really change his routine. I think it's time for Joshua to be no more than two forty. He's still young enough that he can do this. Like, you know, I'd say maybe 235, 240 in between there is where he should probably operate in terms of- Lay off the weights. Yeah, lay off the weights. cardio, maybe training Big Bear or some shit. I don't know. Yeah. Or that fucking jab more. Move his head more, you know. And, and apparently too, in, tra- in sparring, he was using like, he was sparring with amateurs too, like actual amateur fighters. So we don't know where his head was at, but it was just disappointing to see a guy, I mean, you can see Joshua has plenty of raw talent. I myself am a fan of Joshua, but he lost he lost that fight for all the wrong reasons. He 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 he, he didn't respect he didn't respect Ruiz. He didn't have a plan. He didn't train properly. And he lost his belts. Now now I think the biggest thing obviously now is you know you have the Wilder fans coming out of the woodwork talking about oh Eddie Hearn. Uh, you know, Eddie Hearn, no, Maximum is dead. The zone is dead. And I'm just like, I don't think they're dead. Yeah, but he took some hard blows last night, bro. Like, yeah. Well, not the zone for some. They not dead, but they they, they, they lost a, the, the season finale. <laughs> yeah, I mean, not, I mean, the zone is fine, but Matchroom and stuff. Matchroom took a hit, obviously, yes, because, you yeah. know, cash cow outside of Canelo. Two, two robbery. Take a cash cow, take a, a beating. Yeah. And then the main cash cow gets knocked out. So it's just like now they have to, they're now in a position where they have to. Obviously, you now the um, the Wilder Joshua fight is is on ice right now. It's not a fight right now. Unless, of course, Wilder loses his next fight. And then afterwards, it's just like shit, niggas is lost. They got to they fight now. But um, yeah, the fight's on ice now. Now it's gonna be like, okay, Ruiz, who is a PBC fighter, PBC now owns all four of the heavyweight titles. Just like, just like Matchroom, just like Matchroom the Zone have all four of the middleweight belts. The heavyweight belts now are on, are on, well, on PBC. However, not PBC just yet, because apparently Joshua is going to invoke his rematch clause. Which obviously would, which would throw this the rematch in England on the zone. So Joshua will have probably will have one more chance to a to redeem himself from this fight and to get his belts back to you know if he wants to you keep him on the zone the match because I think that was the big thing about signing him was just to get all the heavyweights on there per se because uh, now a a bargaining block that they had a bargaining chip was just removed big time. Uh, I ain't got the belts. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And meanwhile, you know, still make money with the Joshua fights, but it's like him not being a champion, you know, put a little rain on the parade. Exactly. You know, and I know Big Baby right now is probably kicking himself because he fucked up his bag by being a Roy cheat. And then there are other cats in there who, you know, you got Ortiz, Karnacki, and all of them. What, what, Eight mil. Yeah. That fuck Boy, you couldn't tell me Ortiz couldn't knock out that version of Joshua. Mm-hmm. Well, it depends because considering that Ortiz looked like shit himself in his last fight, it was it was probably 50-50. Mm-hmm. You know, it wasn't like Ortiz was shot. I mean, Ortiz looked horrible against a, a C level heavyweight in <laughs> Christian Hammond. Yeah, tis, tis true, tis true. But the but the only what the big what the most important lesson he he brought us a plenty of times is Boxing shot itself in the fight. That's what happened. We lost a yeah. super fight. The fight that quote unquote needed to marinate or got over marinated. And we got what we got. Um yeah, I hope you're happy. Like I don't even know and like no one like and and all this joy that's coming from Wilder is like that shit's just crazy to me because I don't see how you could be happy that somebody else took your easy work and took your easy money. Right. Because all this like I don't see (laughs) you get what that's like you going up to uh, Best Buy to get the last TV and the motherfucker step in front of you and take it. Yeah. 
That's exactly what you, I mean. you you don't congratulate him, do you? <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, Wilder, I mean, obviously, I mean, there's different, I mean, Fury, you know, he, you know, he, you know, he put, uh, I mean, obviously, all three of them don't really get along like that. I mean, Fury was like, you know, keep your head up. Wilder, though, let that bit in this, bit in this one, like, you know, you know, you can do that, you know, you know, people are human or whatever, you know, do that, you know, but, you know, Wilder has to, you know, Wilder has to look at himself in the mirror and be like, you know, <laughs> yeah, I, I could have did that for, I could have did that for 50 mil, I could have did that last year, it's like, everybody is having a little pissing contest, man, like, you know, yeah. and I'm not even saying it's all Wilder fault for the fight not happening, Joshua did part of that too, it's everybody's fault, yeah. you know, Hearn, Hearn, Hearn fault, you know, PBC, you know, Wilder, PBC, all these niggas played a part in this shit, you know, uh-huh. boxing as a whole, like, you, you know, boxing fans won because we got, we finally got the theater of the unexpected, you know, right. Mexico won, you know, because now, you know, the great his, history that's in, that's in Mexican boxing goes up a whole nother level because now y'all got the heavyweight chapter. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that was, and that was so, a chapter in that way, boxing won, you know, just it won in a way where you didn't expect it, you know, <laughs> which, which is a, a fitting twist to the theater of the unexpected. Right. And it's then. Just, we never get what we want in boxing. Like we never get the, the, the one fight we want at the right time when we want it. Yeah. No, we don't get it. And that and that and this is just yeah, another example of a heavyweight version of Gamboa and Wanma. And uh, well, oh, I can't say that all just yet. But right now it's going down that same path. It already bro, it already is, even if the fight happens, it only lust is lusty. Just right. like what Pacquiao made of it. Even shit, before the Montez knockout, fucking when, when Bradley had the little bullshit went over Pacquiao, the mm-hmm. fucking fight went the Mayweather fight went down in my book because it's a blemish. But yeah, Pacquiao had losses, but it was early in his career. He was already at a level where he was beyond that. So to see him get a bullshit loss, it's like God damn. And then the Marquez just God damn again. Even though he fought himself back. And, you know, beat quality dudes and then Paul Mayweather, it just wasn't the fucking same. And by then, Mayweather had a couple tough fights as damn so, so fans still got fucked out of that. Yeah, and so, yeah, and this is what happened when we marinate fights too damn long. You know, yeah. Yeah, you know. Niggas get old, what a bullshit happens, man. Motherfucking, fucking boxing, boy, I tell you. <laughs> yeah, boxing is just, yeah, boxing is something else. Now, in terms of like also wins, there's nothing I would like to highlight too. Just mentioning before, like the zoom, like I said, because the car, obviously the car aired on the zoom, and the car was fire up and down. So now, because of all the controversies and stuff like that, you know, you have possible pre- three potential rematches. They're the position that you know they may get some more eyes or some more subscribers, depending on when these fights are actually scheduled. Uh, when the rematch is actually scheduled. So you can say that's also a win too, because now the zone is buzzing. Like I mean, I know you like they're in the news. Like they're everywhere. Like they're all over. I mean, yeah. ESPN couldn't ignore it, you know, because you know ESPN and I was saying the zone are two different or competing networks. Like Yahoo, Competition. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like you know, you can't ignore. You can't. You can't ignore it. So the zone is actually in the. It, it's in main has major attention because of all the shit that has happened on there. So it needed this, man. They because. They couldn't get because the zone needed a high profile fight that was already getting attention, already getting built up with a big name. It needed it it needed some excitement. It needed a great fight to happen. Basically, remember the Jacobs Canelo fight was a dud. It yeah. Be honest. And the card was also a dud too. So it's like, why, why, who cares about that shit? Joshua was the next step up. Was the next chance. That shit, you know, and it, it did what it did. Yeah, you know, and so yeah, the zone will get. But however, obviously, you know, the rematch they're gonna probably want Joshua to regain his belts. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Bring like, that shit to LA, shit, that man, he, shit, Ruiz, the, the the man now. Like I wouldn't go to fucking the UK. 
unless, unless you triple my money. <laughs> oh man, that's that's what's that's crazy though, man. Wow, like he he flip boxing on top of his head. Yeah, no, yeah, no, it's crazy now, Ruiz. Now, now, now it's gonna be what's the next step for Ruiz Junior. Uh, I mean, obviously the rematch, you know, and then also, I'm sure PBC is not going to let their opportunity to unify the belts fall through the cracks again, or try to unify any type of heavyweight belt. Um, I, mean, I mean, obviously, and also too, there's Ruiz mandatories because I think right now up the bat is the WBO mandatory, which will be dealing in white. So, and I don't, and I depending on what the WBO rules, you know, it's quite possible. That if a rematch does happen, uh, he, uh, he, Ruiz might actually be forced to actually do his WBO mandatory before he can actually do any type of uh, rematch with Joshua, which would be interesting um, because obviously if he faces Dillian, if he doesn't face Dillian White, the WBO will probably strip him. <laughs> so, I mean, if that was to happen, I feel like boxing needs to step up and just make that a dual card. Have him and Joshua fight. <clears throat> Let Joshua get a little confidence booster against somebody, you know, uh, somebody that would like, I guess, like a the type of person you would get for Tyson Fury next fight or some shit. Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, that level, and then have Dylan White and and Ruiz fight on the as the main event as it should be. Fuck all this status shit. You know, you ain't got the belts no more, nigga. So mm-hmm. you know, let Ruiz get the main event. <clears throat> you know, have a dual card. And if Ruiz wins, then sets up the rematch with Joshua. If fucking Dylan White wins, that sets up the rematch with Joshua. Mm-hmm. Fuck it. Like, I mean, the boxing need to get creative and start. These promoters, everybody need to start working together and start making the best events. Because when you see y'all try to go against certain shit, and y'all try to go against it so hard... You, you know, more deviations follow after one. You know, then like they say, you tell one lie, you, you, it lead to another. Like, motherfucker, lie. He, he gonna that mean he'll steal from you too. Like, you you see this shit. Like, y'all tried so hard to stall a fucking fight, and now look, it's back to the whole playing field is different. Mm-hmm. And it's like now, now. That's what has to win this shit. I shit, man. Her might go crazy. You see, honey, he was looking. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, her was already probably on edge with Kelly and Taylor doing what they're doing, but now it's just. Like, I mean, honestly, he probably could have dealt with you know them with me if he, if Joshua didn't lose, man. But yeah, no, it's definitely the position because you know Joshua is the jewel of matchroom boxing. You know, so so yeah, you know that's. Uh, you know, that's that whole card, card in a nutshell. It was a hell of a weekend with that. Um, and then.